Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel for another true crime video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the brutal murder of Hannah Cornelius. Just before I get into the video, I'd like to start off by saying that I mean no disrespect to Hannah's family and that I am just going through and piecing together any evidence that has been found about this case to try and get a story of it all. My condolences are with everyone who has been affected from Hannah's family at this time. I've done as much research as I can into the case, and although there is a lot of information out there, there is still no definitive story as to what actually happened on that night, although evidence from CCTV footage and other bits of evidence pieced together, you can get quite a clear picture of what happened. So on the night of May 27th, 2017, at around 3.28am, Hannah Cornelius, who is 21 years old and in her second year at Stellenbosch University studying a BA in Humanities, was dropping her friend Chesley Marsh, who is 22 years old, at his house in Stellenbosch. I'm sorry if I like mispronounce any of the names of the towns or the people involved in this case. So as I say, Chesley lives in Stellenbosch, west of Cape Town in South Africa. Hannah was dropping Cheslin off after they'd been out for a few drinks and to go get food. Before they initially set off, Cheslin told Hannah that he was going to skateboard home, but Hannah didn't let him saying, no, I'll take you in case anything happens, in case you get robbed. So that's when Cheslin and Hannah set off back to go to Cheslin's house. When they arrived back at Cheslin's house, they were sat outside for a while, uh, just talking, communicating like you usually do. Uh, if you're dropping someone off, just having a quick chit chat. Pretty much directly outside where Cheslin lived. Shortly after they began talking, four men approached the white and blue City Golf. The City Golf is Hannah's car. Those men were Nashville Julius, aged 29, Geraldo Parsons, aged 27, Eben Van Niekerk, aged 28, and Vernon Vitboy, aged 33. These four men were on their way to a flat, not too far from where Hannah and Cheslin was. Whilst the four men was on their journey to the block of flats that they originally was going to, they spotted a car that, with the intention to hijack. But little did they know there was two people still sat inside the car. When they approached the car, this is where the events that took place started to spiral out of control. When the men approached the car, they broke in and Hannah and Cheslin were actually attacked. Hannah was stabbed in the chest by a screwdriver, which was done so through an open window, and was threatened to be stabbed to death if she didn't cooperate. Cheslin was also stabbed with a flick knife in the back and was told that they was going to kill him. Cheslin was robbed of cash and also his mobile phone. In this piece of CCTV footage that I'm just about to show you, it shows the attack actually taking place. You can't really see it because it's kind of behind a bit of a car, but you can see the men going up towards Hannah's car. Once the initial attack was over on Hannah and Cheslin, Nashville Julius actually leaves uh, the other three men and walks off in a different direction, completely just leaving the scene. Hannah is then shoved between two of the front seats and Cheslin is pushed into the back. And this is where the journey begins and they're set off driving. At 3.40am on May the 27th, 2017, the attackers drive off with Hannah and Cheslin both still in the car. This is when the horrible ordeal begins. The men first drove to a drug dealer's house where they bought drugs and smoked crystal meth. The next sighting, which was actually caught on CCTV, the last official known sighting of Hannah, which was at 4.34, a whole hour later to the first sighting, which sees them pulling up to Devon's place, which is just outside Stellenbosch. At this point, Cheslin had already been stuffed into the boot of the car, and Hannah is seen sat in the front seat in her cream-coloured jacket that she was wearing. As I say, this CCTV footage is probably the last known official sighting of Hannah still being alive. When they arrive at the gas station, Vernon Vitboy leaves the car and heads towards the shop, going to go find an ATM machine. As he's entering from the CCTV, you can see him wearing a darker colour of trousers. This is kind of a key point as it will get brought up a change a little bit later on in the video as well. So as I say, when Vernon enters the shop, he heads straight to the ATM machine and tries to withdraw some money from Cheslin's account. But the pin Cheslin gave them was, in fact, incorrect and they were unsuccessful in the withdrawal of any money, so he left empty-handed. This obviously then angered Vernon, who then deemed to want to punish Cheslin a little bit later into the horrible ordeal that they went through. Once they had actually finished at the gas station, they drive from Devon's place along Bottle Ray Road. But they are actually lost during this journey uh, for about an hour, somewhere in Craffentine. Whilst in the car with the kidnappers, Hannah's complying with all the demands that they have to ask, not looking at any of them, just literally facing straight forward and looking at the road ahead. The men told Hannah that what they 
intended to do was to take the car to the block of flats that they originally was going to after hijacking it and then returning it to her in the morning. This is a lie which the men are telling Hannah, but again, she's understanding in a sense and basically still facing forward, just complying with anything that they're asking. Between the times of 5.30am and 6am, the men pulled over somewhere in Craffontine uh, to a dark, isolated area. This area was surrounded by no housing, literally in the complete middle of nowhere. So, as you can imagine, the fear that both Hannah and Cheslin felt. Hannah obviously being able to see the surroundings, making it bad, but then also Cheslin, who was actually in the boot, who was completely oblivious to anything that was going on around him. And to make it even worse, both of them knowing that the men they were with were armed as they saw from the first initial attack. The boot of the car was then opened and Cheslin was forced to get out of it, whilst Hannah was stood anxiously questioning the men on their intentions of what they was going to do to him. In the background, the men was ordering Cheslin to lay down on the ground. Back to the thing which happened in the gas station with the ATM and the incorrect pin, this is where Cheslin was berated for giving them the incorrect pin. Whilst laying on the ground, Cheslin was ordered to put his head onto a brick. The last thing that Cheslin saw was two men holding bricks in the hands. Cheslin was then severely beaten with these bricks until the men actually thought he was dead. The men then left Cheslin for dead, who was bleeding and unconscious just lying on the floor. At this point, Hannah is now alone with her kidnappers, where she is taken to a secluded paintball venue on Bottle Ray Road. Whilst Hannah and the men were actually in this location, from the police report it says that Hannah was severely raped during this time. At this point, daylight was fast approaching now, and both the men and Hannah returned back to the car. This is where they then threw Hannah into the boot of the car and headed to Noahoyak Road. This was actually 20 kilometers from Stellenbosch. During the drive, the car then turned down a small farm road which was next to a stream and alongside a vineyard. At this point, the car then comes to a stop. This area in which they have stopped at would be the last place that Hannah sees. The men then got out of the car and ordered Hannah to get out of the boot, which Hannah refused to. Eben then came up to the car and Hannah was clinging onto the car, refusing to get out, and he actually stabbed her in the back of the neck. And then Geraldo said that he actually let her go when blood started to spill out from the stabbing. Vernon then came up to the car carrying a large rock after Hannah had refused to get out, and at this point still refusing to get out. To which Geraldo said to Vernon, Don't kill her, we've already killed the other one, meaning Cheslin. Let's leave her. But Vernon then threw the big, huge rock that he was carrying onto Hannah's head, which killed her instantly. Hannah was then taken out of the boot and then left at the side of the road. After these murders took place on Hannah, the men weren't finished with any of the crimes that they'd done that day, and they went on to a crime spree after the killing. Geraldo Parsons, Eben Van Nienkirk, and Vernon Vitboy all continued their rampages as the sun was rising. The men headed back to Cryfontaine and chased down a woman who was on her route to work. The woman trips and falls on the floor, and the men rob her and steal her phone and her bag which she had dropped. From the time between 8.15am and 1pm, there is no evidence anywhere of the men between these times. No CCTV footage or anything shows their whereabouts at all, or anything that they've done between that time. But at 1pm in Coolidge River, a few miles away from the last sighting, they rob and kidnap another woman who was on the street. CCTV footage shows the blue and white city golf in the Shell Garage gas station in Breckenfeld. As I previously mentioned in the other part of the video, uh, Vernon's trousers being a different colour. The colour of the trousers then changed in this scene when they came to this new gas station. So this meant somewhere on the route he must have gone home or gone somewhere to go get changed. The, the period of time where there was actually untraceable and there wasn't seen anywhere, then he must have gone somewhere to a change in this period of time. He goes into the gas station shop to withdraw more money, which was actually from the kidnapped woman's account. At this point, Geraldo Parsons is seen walking into the gas station to meet Vernon as they withdraw 3,000 from her account. During this time, the woman is still sat in the car with Eben like, in the back seat. After the money has been withdrawn, the woman is then dropped off not too far away from where Hannah was initially raped. In Vernon Vitboy's confession, he actually states that Geraldo is the main instigator in the whole case. A little while later from dropping the woman off, Eben is then dropped off somewhere near Stellenbosch. 
He receives 1,000 for his participation in the crimes. What began as six people in Hannah's car during the first instance of the kidnapping has now been reduced to two men, Geraldo Parsons and Vernon Vitboy. They are now heading towards Delft and decide to go through Stellenbock to get there. The vehicle they are driving, the blue and white City Golf, is actually spotted by an undercover police. This undercover policeman is Detective Constable Bulayani Sicko, again sorry <laughs> for the mispronunciation, who then follows the two men in the car. A few moments later to this, a police van follows the chase and the blue lights are turned on. The City Golf then speeds away down the road. This then instigates the high speed chase that took place. On this next piece of CCTV footage that I'm about to show, it actually shows the two men pulling into Dwarz in Dilweg Farm as their like last attempt of escaping. Detective Seiko chases them down on foot and a farm gate and a security guard actually stand in the way of them getting any further with the car because at this point the two men were still driving the car. With nowhere to go as they're being blocked, the two men then jump out of the car and then run forward trying to get away from Detective Seiko. Shortly after the men are arrested and the crime spree has been put to an end. At this time it has been a whole 11 hours since the initial attack on Hannah and Cheslin. In this time, the two students from Stellenbosch were kidnapped and robbed and the men attempted to murder Cheslin and then unfortunately succeeded with Hannah. Two more women were also kidnapped on the way home and then this also led towards a high speed police chase which then eventually led to the two men getting arrested. The next day in the morning, Cheslin was actually able to recover after they thought that he was dead and they left him at the scene. So Cheslin recovered consciousness and began to stagger towards the closest house they could find. He had severe, serious head injuries and a broken arm. Although at this point, unknown to Cheslin, Hannah's body had actually been discovered several miles away where the men actually took her and then where she was dumped on the roadside. All four suspects did actually plead not guilty in Western Cape High Court. Julius Nashville, who was the one that left earlier, was only charged with robbery and kidnapping. And then the remaining three men were charged with murder, rape, attempted murder, kidnapping and also robbery. After the attack, Cheslin Marsh didn't actually go back to do his studies at university, as he never returned from the shock of it. He is now left deaf in one ear as a result of the attack. And vivid scars could be seen on his head when he was giving his evidence in court. A year later to this, Hannah's mum actually drowned and passed away whilst swimming in a swimming pool in, in Cape Town. This was ruled as an accidental death. Hannah Cornelius' family has actually set up a foundation in her honour, the HC Foundation. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well so you can donate to that. More information should come of this as more evidence is revealed when it is actually taken to higher court. So stay tuned for that as I may do like a recap on it uh, and talk about any information that comes from or evidence that comes from the higher court case and then we can actually see more in detail as to what specifically happened and then it might reveal what happened during the time that there was untraceable as well. So thanks for watching this video, I hope you did enjoy it. What I'm going to try to do is upload every Wednesday and Sunday. Follow my Twitter for any updates, it's Luke Morris with another S and an underscore. But yeah, as I say, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and make sure you subscribe. Uh, and also turn the notification on as well, uh, so that you are stayed in the loop with any of the videos that come out. So yeah, thanks.